Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I will be teaching you how to play Franz Liszt Livestrom and it's also nicknamed as Love Dream. This is part two. The first thing that you should know is the B major scale. At the beginning we played this melody. Now all he's going to do is take that melody and transpose it. The only addition is that turn coming back. But it's notice that it's the same melody in a different key in B major and it's only adding a half step here to start with rather than adding the whole six interval. Now once we have the melody on the top we could start harmonizing this like he did and we'll find the B major chord and we do the inversions. So we have the first inversion and he's gonna play that together. So we're gonna have D sharp inversion, D sharp inversion. And all he does is move that around. So he does melody on the top. That's it. Now if we have B major here, we could also do the inversions to get it on the left hand. So we have this. So we have this chord. And why not, when you play the D sharp, add the B and jump. We have that measure there, so we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's going to change. The melody is on top and it's a long note, so you should ring that more than the others. Now we'll change now, and we're going to go to a D sharp seven. D sharp seven is like this. What he does is get rid of that. A sharp and put it on the bass and also rearrange this note and play this note. So it's the same. So we have bass and a chord and it repeats two times. Very important. If we add the D sharp on top, we end up with this. And we could start moving that around also. Rest, melody, and we change to the next one. So let's play up to that point from B major. Now here we're gonna change, we're gonna go to a chord that is named D sharp minor flat five. So we have this notes. Notice that it's dissonant, and if we have this notes, if we flip the same notes, F sharp here, C sharp here, and D sharp here, we have the inversions for it, we'll use this chord. So we have the A, and it's going to change, we have a different chord next. So we add the D, we go inside, melody again. If we move that around again, we have this together, melody. And change. We're gonna go to a G sharp seven. Let's play it one last time from B major. Now here we're gonna go to the melody E and G sharp on the bass. So we have the melody there, and if we harmonize it, we'll go to this chord. We'll also add the same notes, so if we have F sharp, we have F sharp on the left hand, C, C on the left hand, and D sharp here. So we play together, inside, melody to D sharp, and change. One last time, slowly. The extra challenge he's having here is adding the left hand harmony, which are the same notes flipped. At the beginning we did this. So it was just one hand 
taking care of the harmony, we have a bass line, now we have double. So it's adding, like he said at the beginning, more passion to it by adding the two lines. It's a very beautiful contrast and it adds something new to it. First, he added a new key, a B major, beautiful key, and he's adding two voices to it plus the bass. It's very interesting. It's important that you keep that inside a little bit less volume, so that means bring this and then light. You get the sense that it's moving. You know? More volume, get there, okay? Always keep in mind, same melody. Always keep that in mind while you play all the other backgrounds. So C sharp seven is like this. And he's gonna bring that C sharp on the bass, add a D to it here, flip the notes a little bit, get this. And the left hand will have F, B, D sharp. So it's always symmetry, the same notes on the right hand are flipped in a different order and kind of like a six pattern, even though we have fifth sometimes. So we have this. So we play this and if we move it, okay, we go to G, we flipped all those notes. So now let's see it. melody on the top so let's play it right hand by itself that's it left hand by itself and together we go back to G sharp 7 and because the melody is G sharp already we add the C sharp E and F. So, so we have G sharp seven here and we have the melody on the top and we'll add this chord. And we could add the melody. Let's do it again. Together these two notes. Together these two notes and D sharp. If we add the left hand, Notice that the same notes at the right hand. So we could play the background and then add the melody. Notice D sharp on the top, same background. Together. By itself now. And I want you to think this as we came back now to be major. Left right hand we have this. That's the melody. Background is this. So if we do it together. And you aim towards the top. Left hand, it has the B major. Like a bending note there, an F and a scale again. So we have like a bending note on F, back, all together. Okay, and we have everything. Now it's important, you could try to play the melody with just the bass, so you try this. a sense of the melody. Now if you want to, you could play also the chords in the middle.
chords with the bass. playing that you could have a better sense of where the piece is going and then you add it all together I hope this is helpful let's continue Always, always, always do a study of the melody, a study of the bass, and a study of the harmony, a study of the rhythm. All of that helps a lot. So sometimes it seems like this uh, kind of way of doing things is too slow, but really cuts the time and you'll learn it in no time. Very fast after you do all this thinking with me. Let's continue now. So when we go back, that's the same. So if you did all of those, this, this will be easy now, because you have the same thing. Now here, instead of here, we're going to lower right off. So let's play a little bit of the melody. So we have... We changed the direction of the melody that we had at the beginning of the piece. So it's going somewhere else. Like an F major there. So we're gonna take it the same way we did the melody. We harmonize B major, same chord. So we have that's the same thing from before, but it's not taking two of them, it's changing within one chord. So we have this now. Same thing. Change. Change again. Bass, A flat, and then here this is a completely kind of new material because we're going to C major, going here. So if we have the melody as D sharp, we could do the same chords that we have before. So we have chord one and chord two here, and we could run it the same way. It's important that you remember that. If you do it with the left hand, we do it together. And then we just move that. Now, when we go, we have the same melody on the top, but we change to this chord right here. sharp 7 again we did it before going to A flat we keep the same chord but we'll add the melody so if we move it bass melody and we have the D but it's bending to C major and we have two times this so we have So if we put the bass We have two G's Now the only thing that's left for us to do is Add this chord C major so Again Right hand F, F major G We could call that all together like this We could call that a G9 so, and we get there. Okay, so let's play it there. Bass. Changing keys now. And for the first time, we get to a kind of a brighter color uh, chord. And remember this with passion, so you could go a little bit faster, you could go for it. And it says pew animado, so. Crescendo. 
Fernando Mays Okay I hope that's helpful We have a line now with octaves We have this So for that remember the same line from before we started at the beginning so let's just do it in another key and an octave so we have left hand we have G D F sharp A what we call a G ninth G7 and we go to C major so we have same way like we did at the beginning One last time. And remember that we come from here, so by itself, together, together. Tenth here, if you can reach, you could split it. Everything works here. So from here. the octaves you ring the top note so. the next part is based on the theme that we did at the beginning I think you remember this so if you take those notes out you see this melody think on that right after we play you have this octaves here so it's the same as this so you have so I wanted to relate it to that the only thing is we do it with octaves So after we have that melody, we could start adding the chords to it. F minor comes from here. F and A, we put it in the middle. We keep F minor. We go. There we get to C major. Notice that the G is here. A minor color and we get the G so if at the beginning with this this chord that means it relates to C major so we have this we're gonna place the left hand here and we have a C major chord extended to C if we take on this note on this E we have another inversion and we could pick those two notes so I want you to study this like this and C you go down and E so you go down here up E up so that those you have to group them in four notes those four those four and then you have just those two so it's much easier if you do that passage like this Important that you remember this because that's the link to F minor. So C major. Okay. So for arpeggios, I've been discussing a whole bunch of videos. It's always an up down movement. So I go down, up, down, up, down, up, and F. Notice I group four, four, two, and F. It's true that because you do down up the thumb should be down a little bit up we place here down up and these two notes down up on G up like that so one last time down up all three notes down up T 
down up. Some people like to think that they have to shift. I cannot play this with the same hand position, so I have to move towards it. If I just this way, I go towards that way a little bit. Same here. Okay? If we do it together. The last C matches the octave and we get to F minor. F minor is like this. And all we do is the inversions also. And we do the same pattern. So we have this one, and then we'll take on C, and then we have this two notes. So, group them. Four notes, four notes, and these two by itself. And we do the same technique. So we go down, up, down, up, down, up, and back to C major. We do the down with going on the uh, a little bit inside on the keyboard because the black keys C F and but again down up down up down up and we get there so if you think of those movements you can miss it and you adjust a little bit. That means that little movement right there, going where the behind. In other words, the hand has to go behind the finger. You should feel it. So let's play up to that point. So we have this. Okay, to see if I do it slowly. So we do the same. This one is new. A minor. A minor is like this. So we'll take these notes as an A minor inversion. We flip. And we get here. Okay. So if I do the entire left hand, we have this. F minor. to E major so that's it it's important sometimes that the pivot of the hand the second the third and the fourth finger they are very firm so then when you play C that's firm there that's firm that's firm when you do F minor the same here firm because that allows you to play very accurate firm and back to C Now we're going to A minor, same. If you miss a lot of notes, it's because of that. You could think also like this. F minor. If we put it together with a melody, and we change. So if we play a little bit from before, we have this. part like I said before this is all based on the materials that we play in the first video remember the melody that we have we had this so first time he transposed it to B major Now, he's going to transpose it to E major, you should know the scale. E 
E major is like this. So he's going to take the G sharp and play it from that note. Again. Same melody. B major. Now the only thing he does is in octaves. Same melody. Notice. Notice that relationship there. Just another key for you. So three keys you have to know to play this song. Now, he does it in octaves. And if you have the G. G sharp is part of the E major chord. So what he does is flip the notes to this inversion and move them around. So he plays up. Then he changed the chord. To reinforce that he had the E here. So what we need to do is also add E major here. Same inversion and we move them around. And that's it. On the lips, when you jump, turn first I look at the E and the G sharp. I jump and kind of while I'm playing this, I'm looking at G sharp here first and then E. So I move that. So I kind of the right hand move first. See, you notice a split second that I move right hand first. So. so that's that's why I could um, always play it right. Because I don't look both at the same time. So together, the force that you do down, it brings you up to here. This one will bring you up again, G sharp, but we, we change to D sharp on the bass and we'll move this chord around. We start on the C by itself. Let's do it again. And we get there. So we play that. Notice the crescendo. You could go poco loco there. To D now. This is really a G sharp 7, but the bass is D in it. Same chord. It comes from here, G sharp 7, with a flat 5. Charge seven. And we get there. So I'm gonna play very slowly. The trick is always the same. Right left when you jump. E major. G sharp seven. We move the crescendo diminuendo. Melody again. To A. Get there. You could split the hands. Play that. Or do the same with the left hand. sense of where the harmony is going. Seven, F sharp seven, flipped. 
So you, I will think of this position and then of this position here. And then back. Move it around. So let's match it now together. Matches. Matches every other note. All E major notes. Now let's try to play it all together. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much.